guys, welcome to a new review. This time the review is of Sheffield Wednesday versus Birmingham. As you can see, the stats and everything are around me again with the momentum, the stats, the table, my ratings, sofa scores ratings and team lineups for the game down there. So if you're new, please give us a like, comment down below and subscribe. And I hope you enjoy the look of the new reviews. So to start off, obviously, we're all happy about the fact that we won a match. Big, big, big win. Beating a team like Sheffield Wednesday, who are in this relegation battle, is exactly what we needed. Um, beating them went out two points ahead of them, which is big they've got a game in hand on us obviously and Rotherham also have two games in hand on us but pushing ourselves out of that relegation battle is a great money mind great for the mind because you see in it you believe in it and then you think this is possible this is a possible outcome we can get out of this battle being out of that relegation space is, is a really important thing for the mind you need to see it to believe it and one of the big parts of it was obviously the red card. Their red card to a mid, one of their midfielders, I think, Shaw. Um, he wasn't playing great up until then, but then he got sent off. And they looked like they struggled a little bit with 10 men. But they, they came on a little bit towards the end, so they started playing a little bit better. And they had a couple of shots which were very unnerving in the like 90th, 95th minute. So, on to talking about the players. So the ratings I've given them, uh, Etheridge gave it 7, I thought he played quality, he made some really good saves and his kicking was better than normal. Uh, Colin didn't do anything specifically sensational but wasn't bad either, 6.5, Harley Dean thought played quite well, clean sheet 6.5, was close to a 7. Clark Salter at 6, I thought he made a couple of mistakes in the game, he, his marking wasn't brilliant, but he was still there, he played alright, above the average, 6. Pedersen gets a 7, I thought Pedersen was brilliant. Defensively, Pedersen was playing really well, and offensively I think he may have had one of his best games in, well, this year. He played really well, he showed his passion, he showed his determination to win the ball when it was already when the ball was lost, the ball was behind him, the player was behind him, he makes get slide tackles, he was playing better than he has in a long while Sonia gets a 6, he wasn't brilliant, he didn't really do much, but once again 6 average score Harper gets an 8, Harper is getting my man of the match award um, Harper really played well for me, and I think he really deserved the Man of the Match award. Um, Gardner gets a six. Gardner was alright again. Nothing special. Simple six. Sanchez, seven and a half. I thought Sanchez played really well, tracking back. Some great tackles in. Um, all match, he was there. Except when he was brought off, obviously. But all the match while he was on the pitch, he was running down the wings, trying to get the ball, running back, tracking back to win the ball, getting forward, trying to put ball in. He did great. He was brilliant. Um, same with Bella. Bella gets a seven. He wasn't quite as good as Sanchez. His assist was great. He didn't track back quite as much, but he was playing brilliant as well. And Hogan, 7.5. He scored the goal. He played all right. He certainly made some good runs and could have scored more. So it was nice to see him play well again. So another goal clocked up for Scott Hogan. Um, I think that takes him up to six goals. I could be mistaken. Um, but I think it takes him up to six six goals. So our top goal scorer now is on six goals. So he's he, he's rising up a little bit. He might get it just over those double figure mark, which would be great. Um, 
now off the bench, Helenovic came on. Helenovic did some nice runs. He used that space quite well. So when the red card happened and once it when it was on, they then brought off a defend, defensive player for an attacking player, which played into our path perfectly because Helenovic was just running the line and running back and forth and playing the space. He played really well. 6.5 because he wasn't on the pitch quite long enough to get higher than that. San Jose coming off for of Bella and Roberts coming on for of Sanchez. Uh, the pain that went through me when I saw those were the changes. Um, the width was gone again. And the width was what was very important in this game. And I thought, once again, this is tactically inept. Karanka making a horrible mistake, bringing on defensive midfielder and centre-back, going five at the back, two defensive midfielders in front. It was like, why? We, d we didn't need to do it. We did it against ten men. It was very nervous for when he once he'd done it. But hey. And on to Leko, I thought Leko was okay when he came on. Didn't really do much. 91st minute. He only had three minutes on the pitch. So I did ask about other people's Man of the Match awards and I did get some responses um, so I had a peth a, a pethridge a, that's a combination of the two a pedison and an etheridge so one mark for Harper, one mark for pedison and one mark for etheridge there so looking at the stats obviously we've dominated possession again so we're starting to play well with possession we're starting to have more possession than our opponents, which is different to what we were before. And, yeah, having more possession than our opponents is expected when they're down to 10 men, I would say. Um, they have more shots than us and more shots on target, which, towards the end of the game, they started having a lot more shots and a lot more shots on target. They had two or three really good shots uh, that Etheridge saved. They had two that one of their midfielders, or it might have been their defender, actually. It might have been Lee's, actually who put over the bar, um, yeah, but, great defending again, um, passing stats were looking better than, better than before, 71% accuracy, 42% on long balls, better than normal, um, Etheridge making three saves is a little worrying, but at the same time, it's good to see him making them. Uh, having six shots inside the box, so we're actually getting the ball inside the box to have six shots, so that's good. So yeah, today is an enjoyable game. It was an enjoyable match, I guess, because we won, and we played okay. I still would be n n not against them sacking Karanka because I still don't think he's the right man for the job and if we keep him for the next couple of games and lose the next couple of games then we're back where we've started so this win would have been worth nothing if he's to stay we need a couple of wins out of our next few games obviously next game is Norwich so <laughs> we don't expect miracles um, we don't expect to be beating top of the league um, which Norwich we might as well already be congratulating them on promotion, let's be honest. If you look at the league table there, what, what seven points clear already? Um, so yeah, after that we've got a, a decent game against QPR, mid-table QPR. Victory could be very important there. And after that we have Huddersfield Town away, another important game playing 18th in the league uh, Barnsley at home their upper table but it could still be important and then Reading so we've got some more difficult games we've got two of the top six uh, a team in 10th in there but we also have a team in 18th in there so we need to make sure we win those games mid table teams lower table teams we need to make sure we win those and try and get something from the upper teams so try and get your points from reading get your points from your
try and get something from Norwich. I mean, if we could get a point from Norwich, that would be huge. It's a completely unexpected point, so that would be big. So, thanks for watching this or listening to this via the podcast. Um, keep right on. On to the next game against Norwich. Hopefully, we can get some more points under the belt. Here on.